Uh, hello there. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is James Burnell. I'm trying to reinvent a failing business. So my background, uh, I'm a salesman. I think I've done every single sales course known to man, but unfortunately you don't get a degree in selling. So my specialty has been helping people like Sabine in the past, and I've worked with lots of startups. But my background also includes a little hobby called art glass. Now, at the back of the room, there's a display of some glass up there, uh, some really large and unusual statement pieces. And I ran a part-time business here in South Australia, uh, working on my dreams, because that's what you're supposed to do, you pay the bills during the day, work on your dreams at night. And that was all about, I met a, an amazing Japanese artist in 1996, fell in love with his designs, he was blowing a little bit of glass for me, he taught me to blow some glass, he's a Venetian trained master art glass artist. And what came out of that was a relationship where I then started importing from Indonesia, where his studios are, he relocated from Tokyo to Indonesia, long story but I won't give it to you, but he remarried, and in Japanese culture, to remarry is very disrespectful to the first family, so to be able to remarry, he relocated to Indonesia, taking his talents and his studios with him. I met him about six months after he moved there and built a wonderful relationship with him and I still have a very strong relationship with him now. Out of that, I, uh, I created a desire to want to bring these pieces to Australia and within the folder that I've passed to the panel and I have some examples that I've left at the back of the room, um, I started importing glassware to Australia and I built a little part-time business on my own based upon, oh, I think I've Oh, that would be really good. People will love this stuff. They've never seen it before. And I ended up supplying 16 stores in South Australia as a wholesaler, having a warehouse down in Dudley Park. And the one thing I forgot about it was who's going to be the storeman. So it was really, really great. I was supplying 16 stores. Everything they got was selling. They kept selling out, selling out. But who was the storeman? Me. And I had no intention of wanting to spend my days stuck in a warehouse seeing not a soul other than unwrapping glassware, checking it and rewrapping it. So I decided, although my business was technically successful, it wasn't what I wanted, it wasn't the dream, it was just another job. So I decided to stop doing that. So thus the unsuccessful side of my business. Earlier this year, I still had a warehouse full of stock. Uh, what I had, had to do was effectively carry about 600 pieces of one of designer pieces for a retailer to come in and choose 20. And then the next one would come in and go, oh, what somebody got here first, all the good stuff's gone. And so that's an unsustainable business model. So I come from an unsustainable business model, but I'm trying to reinvent. And I'm trying to use the philosophy of McDonald's. If they want hamburgers, you don't try and sell them chicken. Okay, so what I, uh, early this year, I decided to quit over 500 pieces of stock I uh, created a pop-up shop in Millwood, um, no advertising, two eight-frame boards, one on one side of the pedestrian crossing, one on the other side of the pedestrian crossing. Uh, I was moving $6,000 a week within about four weeks. Uh, without restocking, uh, every single week from Christmas on, I kept selling the same amount of uh, volume-wise and dollar-wise as I did at Christmas. So even though my stock levels went from 500 pieces 600, nearly 600 pieces down to the end of it, um, I had about 75 left. It didn't affect my cash flow. It just more and more people discovered me. Wow, I've never seen this before. And so I was a wholesaler supplying to the general market because all I wanted to do was quit the stock. You know, the stock I paid for, I owned it. I now wanted to just monetize it again. Through that process though, I had a meter high cast head of Jesus, uh, 185 kilograms, amazing piece. Uh, and I invited Centennial Park to come down and see it in case they might have been interested for it for the Catholic part of the cemetery. And while they were there, they oh, yes, yes, we'll go back to the board and we'll talk about this. And why I'd approach Centennial Park was because my father used to be on the board there, he's buried there now, and so are most of my relatives. So I sort of had a bit of a in the heart for them. Um, in the process, they spotted one particular thing on my shelves and said, it's just beautiful. And the reason I put this on the, the table was the quality of my glasses in the, the small samples there. Right. But they said, oh, that just made the most beautiful urn if it was just a bit different size. 
And I said, well, what soft do you want? And they said, well, well, you know, we need to be like this. Said, cool. uh, I'm the manufacturer, effectively. I have seven studios that, that create for my brand. I've done more than 80 trips to Indonesia and spent nearly four years of my life there creating the relationships with the studios that are there. So I knew I had a really good set of relationships. The intellectual property I claim is the relationships that I had in place. I'd love anybody to try and go and create the relationships I've got without doing 80 trips and spending four years of our life to create those. So well, I said, sure. And we went and did some prototyping and, and I raced back over to the studios and came back. Here you go. I said, okay, well, we don't mind that shape. Because the thing about if you're trying to create a product, you, it's got to be right. So I thought, well, if I'm working with the people that do this, that are the experts in your industry, and they tell me what they want, and I can create what they want, then maybe that's a recipe for success. So the long and the short of it is, uh, while I'm working with them, um, I've, over a period of the last four trips this year, I created a range where I, instead of now, well, instead of previously carrying 600 plus lines, that could be 1,000 lines, could be 2,000 lines, I now do two styles, three colours, and eight sizes. So the examples on the tables and the ones up at the top there were my last uh, uh, prototype run. So the ones at the front of the table are actually not the correct colours because the colours in, in art glass, the more expensive uh, the, the colours we use for production are about four times the cost of the colours that I would use in prototype. So I, I came back earlier this year, middle of the year, my wife in Sweden was about to have another child, so I said, well, Sorry, I don't have any more time to do any more about this now. I, my wife's about to have a baby, I'm going home. So I share a residence between South Australia and Sweden, and I, I've spent about six months of the year here, six months of the year there. Um, whilst I was there, I did a huge amount of research into the global industry, and I can just about tell you anything you want to know uh, from a market research point of view about any market in the world or the funeral industry how many percentage of people are cremated, whether it's legal to take the remains home, et cetera, et cetera. Because that's what my background is, in trying to create markets. Um, the products, uh, within 24 hours of, uh, of delivering what I thought was, well, here's your last one, prototypes. Um, they, the crematorium placed an order. They doubled their intended order of what they had intended to do based upon the prototypes uh, and saying, well, James, you know, we trust you. We trust the colours, we've seen what you do, and this is what we like. So effectively based on that, I left with an eight thousand dollar order and thought, well, that's nice. You know, within twenty four hours they've come back and I got on the plane and went back to Sweden. Uh, I've come back now to do that production run. Accordingly, the, uh, I spent a lot of time marketing into Europe or trying to market into Europe. But what I've now done instead of being a wholesaler to a retailer, is I'm now a supplier to direct wholesalers. So the catalogue that I've put on the table there, uh, that is the UN catalogue that's produced for every funeral director and crematorium in Australia. And I'm now working with them, this time I've, uh, I've, I've white-labeled my product.